Now we did mention pool activities. There's a caveat with that. You know, a person should not be um, prescribed swimming or other types of water exercise if they've got catheters, central lines, feeding tubes, obviously people who have ostomies for uh, colon cancer or for those receiving radiation. But if a person is post-treatment and they've had the catheters and central lines removed, then they are okay to use the pool. But yes, you do wanna watch uh, for people who have these conditions and they should not be going in the water for those. And as we mentioned, you're probably going to have to constantly change the exercise prescription for people who are undergoing treatment that they're gonna have days that they'll feel better and days that they'll feel worse. So the modification of the program is pretty much a given. If you look at this table 10.3, they um, give some of the, the contraindications for starting, stopping, and other risks. So especially with breast cancer, as we talked about, you know, the women may have to have had some physical therapy to really help with their range of motion before they um, are able to go to an exercise program. If they start to develop lymphedema where they previously have not had them. And uh, people who have colon cancer, if they've got ostomies or if they've had surgery, they're at risk for hernia. So you really have to watch what they can do abdominal wise. And gynecologic cancers that you have to watch for swelling or changes in the lower body, especially if there's been any chemotherapy or radiation to those areas. So um, looking about, you know, bone, bone pain, you know, they give the recommendations there. So you have to really watch for fractures. So you, ha you may have to lessen impact and maybe do something where they're going to not have as much impact. And so, um, you know, and you can go through the different tables about these. So it, it is, um, you know, there are some issues. You do have to watch for um, falls. So, you know, balance training is important, but it can also, you know, we want to make sure that people don't have a fall risk as well. The Schmitz et al. study, we're going to be talking a little bit about that. That'll be your assignment. The ACSM Cancer Exercise Trainer Certification. So you have to have any ACSM certification, such as the health fitness specialist or personal trainer or the clinical, and, um, or the other NCCA accredited. So if you have NSCA um, certified strength and uh, conditioning specialist or you're an athletic trainer, you can also take the certification. You need CPR, AED, bachelor's degree plus 500 hours or 10,000 hours specific to training older adults. So I've got a little assignment for that for this class on, on the KSAs for the cancer exercise trainer. So the bottom line is, you know, exercise training in cancer survivors is safe and effective. You're probably going to need a lot of individualized modifications. People's energy levels are going to vary, their fatigue levels, their nausea, we really need to um, you know, get more data for as many people that get cancer, particularly in cancers other than breast cancer. You know, Be aware of the guidelines from the Cancer Exercise Roundtable and this new edition of the guidelines. Overall, basic ACSM recommendations are going to be appropriate for them. You know, Develop good relationships with a medical team if you're going to be working with cancer survivors. So, you know, they want to, you know, they need to feel a trust that they can send their patients to you, that you are competent in leading them in exercise. So it's a lot more than just getting the certification and hanging out a shingle. So have a good referral network in there. And then here is your sample question.